today is my cross country solo. So I'm gonna read you some of the some of the top comments. Now this is supposed to be a completely flat surface. The whole surface should be like that. Right the whole surface fingers, should be like this. Like... We're back, boys. Shop Hellcat, getting her dialed. Give us the two key things for this. One, two. beautiful day out here in sunny Florida and I'm headed to Fort Myers to go hang out with the guys at shop Hellcat and do some car stuff they said they might have some cool things going on with the GTRs and Hellcats and my cars actually there we're just waiting on the clutch to get back from monster so today is my cross-country solo so I got to check off three airports and I got to go over 100 miles I think it is and I'm definitely doing that today I'm gonna go down to Punta Gorda first and then stop at Page Field in Fort Myers, which is right next to Shop Hellcat. And then I'm gonna come back up through Arcadia and then back to Sarasota. It's gonna be a great day of flying and I'm excited for you guys to tag along. Shop Hellcat, getting her dialed. Got a new screw here for the uh, new billet tensioner that I got because I stripped the one, the one as soon as I got it. I'm going to take this out of our pulley off so we can run a more common sized belt. Yeah, it adds a little bit more support to the belt so it doesn't slip as much, but I'm having trouble finding the right belt size. So I'm just going to take this off and put the new uh, billet tensioner on. Then this should be done up front, and then you said the clutch is coming back from Monster in a day or yep. two. Should be here tomorrow or Wednesday, and then the trans is over there if you want to take a look. Yeah, at let's go look at that thing. And this is Zach's GTR, guys. He's going what for 13, 1400 horsepower? 13, 14, yep. 13, 14. You can do a lot to those GTRs, tell you what. All right. Got the trans over here. Oh, like there's my backup engine. <laughs> <laughs> my backup. Red eye block. <laughs> yep, so this is your trans. You can tell it's mine just by the way it is. Oh yeah. That's not Real mine. This is, this isn't mine for sure. No. no it's <laughs> yeah, that's out of, uh, I don't know, the red car up front, the head blown transmission. Yeah, classic. Well, I can't wait to drive her, tell you that. Yeah, I'm excited to rip it again. Can't wait to rip this thing again. Oh, and the, what do you think of the wrap idea? Oh, it's sick. I put it. the wrap right here. What do you guys think? I'm pretty excited about it. I might for that. It looks really good. We've got this American Racing Solutions billet <laughs> tensioner. Let's see what's going on here. It doesn't see the other way because they sent us the wrong one. So we're doing a little redneck en engineering here and we're getting it to seat right so that the pulley doesn't slide back and forth. Mm -hmm. Destroy cool. the bearing. All right, all that's left to do on this car, I gotta put the uh, supercharger belt on, accessory belt on, and then they have the clutch coming in within the next day, probably be here tomorrow. It's also getting a one-piece drive shaft instead of the two that come stock on the car because one of them's already destroyed. Yeah, let's see the, this is the drive shaft that was in the car, the boot blew out. I don't know how that could have ever happened. And all the grease is gone. Ooh, nasty. So we got that one piece in. Is there like a carrier bearing in the middle or anything that you got to take out or no, replace? No, no, the one piece just full it eliminates all that. Yep. Nice. Well, it's even weight savings of two 13 mil bolts because you don't have to put that center bracket back in. Weight saving. Yeah, I'm worried about that on this car. Yeah. She's a heavy girl. Heavy. We just decided to go one piece. There's one available as used lightly. So I'm going to get it on this car and then it should be dialed and I can start putting some miles on it because I've been dying to drive this thing. I haven't driven it for a while and it's a fun car. It's turned up to like 860 horsepower and Okay, I just spent half my morning and a little bit of the afternoon hanging out at Shop Hellcat, get my car ready, finally going to get it back soon, and I'm doing my cross-country solo today. So I went from, again, Sarasota to Punta Gorda to Pagefield down in Fort Myers. Now I'm going to go through Arcadia and then back to SRQ. So let's get back to the sky. Toe Tower, Helicopter 367 Lima Alpha. 
The 367 Lima Alpha Sarasota Tower, Squawk 0135, stay attention. Squawking 0135, I am about seven miles to the east. I'd like to add direct to Retrix North. This is 7 Lima Alpha, remain east of Taxway Charlie, landing Retrix North at your own rescue spot in the area. 7 Lima Alpha will remain east of Charlie, landing at our own risk. Well, it's been two days since Sam and I took the transmission out of the car, and we already have it back. Sam has a local guy who came in really well for us over at Champion Racing Transmissions in Bradenton. Mm -hmm. In Bradenton, yeah. And he immediately diagnosed what was wrong with it, so we're going to show you guys. All right, are you ready? I'm going to read you some of the, some of the top comments in the video I posted two days ago. This is, this is his knee. He said... Thanks for putting Sam on your channel. He's a great addition around the shop. That man is, that man who is, has searched for perfection in everything he has done throughout his life. I can appreciate a guy like that. They don't always get up way ahead in life making the quick buck, but he's likely never ripped a guy off or intentionally misled anyone. And that's how you rest easy at night. And then uh, more younger guys need to spend time with guys like Sam. The Sams of this world are getting hard to find. And when they are gone, they they take all the knowledge with them. He's a great addition to your channel and the cleanest channel. And there's 350 comments like this. It is incredible. It's really yeah, neat. Uh, and there, it's thanks to let's you. say 98% of them are about you. I appreciate that more than you know, really do. <laughs> it is neat. And you know what I would really, one of the things I would, it's a fantasy dream, but it's a dream, <clears throat> is to the things you've gathered throughout your life in your head, not, not your material thing, is to be able to give those away to a, a good recipient. So at the end of your life, your head's empty. I know that's kind of a fantasy thing, So, but you give them back everything that you took in, right. but you give it back where it can stay, you know? It'd be, I, it'd be something. The guy I bought my practice from earlier this year, we talked and, you know, there's a point in your life where you're in my stage and, you know, you're entering your career and you buy business and you got to pay off your debt and then you get to a lot of position in your life where you're raising a family and then you know you get to towards the end of your career and you know you you've made your money and you're doing paid people well and you made a good reputation for yourself and then you reach a point where you sell the business and now you all you want to do is give your knowledge to it, somebody it, else you you're, you're dead on you're dead on because you your life runs in stages you know you have any teenage in the, in the early 20s it's a crazy stage you know, i mean you want you this is crazy then you start a family, and then things just kind of, like I said, move along. And you get down to the end, you think, wow, all this you've got here, and your material thing, but your material things is whatever, is you want to give that to a good, willing recipient. And it's, uh, and that's, that's what you want to do. You want to give away. But you know, people take old people and they say, no, nah, they ain't got nothing. Well, that's where the knowledge base is. I agree. That's where the knowledge base is. I agree. And yeah, sometimes you have to put up there, they can be a little you know, childish sometimes, but that's okay. You listen to what they've got and you think, okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And if you teach integrity, and not so much, this is the way we used to do it, but if you teach integrity, it's always you know, well accepted. Yeah, that's really neat. I even put her battery charger on there. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I need She's that. charging now. <laughs> you are incredible. She's charging now. And I you had, are incredible. Uh, All I'm excited to get it back together. Oh. And what he told me was that this shift lever was in between first and second, right? So it was about right there when it was supposed to be in first. Mm -hmm. And what that was causing is not enough transmission pressure in the lines, right? Correct. So correct. it should be in the 150s, 170 actually, PSI, actually right? It should be around 2 to 220. 200 to so 220. if you full in gear, it should be around 220 PSI. I could go to 240 with yep. the thing. So in the first gear here, you're gonna be at 220 to 240 line pressure. Yep. When you decrease that, then that's when your bands so he said that it was only, since it was in between gears, it was probably only at about 20 to 30 PSI. That's why we burn our fluid and we totally destroyed the drum. Look at this. Now this is supposed to be a completely flat surface. The whole surface should be like that. Right the whole surface fingers. should be like this like and it is completely blown out. So we ruined the new drum <laughs> and smoked all the clutches. Yes. You can see how burnt. A lot of mm -hmm. these, uh, especially on your material, or on your phenolic material. Oh yeah, look at that right there. Here. Yep, that is burnt. And then also we had the wrong servo spring in, and then we replaced the pump side because this is a bushing, and we changed it to a roller bearing mm -hmm. type. So 
couple upgrades on the transmission. This thing should be pretty bulletproof at this point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a fully nice. built power glide. This is going to be nice. It's going to be good transmission. All right, so we're going to do a couple of changes here on the car. We hammered this in to give us a little more space on our shifter mm -hmm. so we can get it a little bit more dialed in. Give us the two key things for this. One, two. Oh, yeah. We're going to correctly space your, our your converter. Your spacing is super critical, as is your sh shifter being an adjustment on it. So. What we need on the adjustment is one B up there. When we got it in low up there, it should yep. be fully in low here, and the little shifter piece right here, this, yeah, fall right in. Okay. And we'll go to second. Yep. Same. Same second thing up on there, there. Drop in here. Okay. Then we'll go all the way to park. Park up there. Yeah. This should drop right into it. Great. Now, if we need to move it in the slots, we'll move it. But that's that's that's. Or the if procedure. we need to move it in and out on the bracket, or if we need to do any of that, we that, can we can do that. That's your procedure. That's what we're going to have. Okay. And Sounds the other good. critical portion up here is in the uh, converter in the space out or forward, if you will, and it's got to be 125 thousandths. Yeah. A little tolerance plus or minus five. Before I just had one grade eight washer. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was my measurement, but now we're gonna do it the correct way. So we don't burn up a transmission again. No, we don't need that thing smoked again. No. no <laughs> All right, no, you ready? No. Yeah. Let's get it in. back in the car got everything tightened up to hand spec and now we have to reattach the dipstick for the trans and we got the linkage all set up right tested it in first second neutral reverse and park basically we had to do some adjustments here and some adjustments here and got it back to where it should be ready let's bring her down down it comes before we wrap this video up i want to show you the rear end on the car because I need a little bit of guidance. Obviously we have a lot of power and we have a great transmission now, but now it's transferring all that power to the ground. I do have better tires that are here. I just need to put them on the car. And then we ordered some Mensur shocks, but my goal would be to pretty much run this exact setup for sick week, put some Mensur shocks on here, but I would like to do some upper control arm torque boxes because right now we're just rocking the stock, stock supported torque boxes on the upper and the lower. But, you know, obviously not ideal. It'd be great to be on a coilover setup. I do have an anti-roll bar across the top, but it's not beautiful the back here, but we're gonna try and get it dialed in for the class that we're gonna be running. And with only a month left before the race starts, there's not a lot of time to tear this whole thing apart and then test it. Because every race week I've gone into, I haven't had time to test the car and I wanna change that for this time around because we're close to having a month of preparation, which I haven't had before. Uh, like I said, the only thing that's probably going to change back here between now and then is getting some Mensur shocks in the rear. Mm -hmm. And not coilovers, but l just the shocks that could be converted into coilovers in the future. But that involves cutting this whole floor out and redoing the floor in here and lower control arms, upper control arms, torque boxes, you know, coilover kit, everything like that. So like I said, let's use what we got and spice it up a little bit with some rear suspension in the front. I do have strange coilovers. I'm probably gonna rock these unless Mensur can get some coilovers built between now and sick week, but that's it. I hope you guys like this episode, moving forward on the car and uh, getting close to testing. Thanks for watching, make subscribe, like, leave me a comment. See you later. Goodbye, y'all have a great day, <laughs> time of year. Yes, As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only $39. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's Basically the same thing as a Sonicare, except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush at every three months, so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.